Game Warden Morgan Inman kicks off opening day of deer season in the Angelina National Forest, one of four national forests in Texas. It's opening weekend, and got a lot of hunters out in the woods. All these people just start coming out of the woodwork, and it just it really gets busy this time of year. This is where you, you make up for those slow summer days. With the largest population of white-tailed deer in the country, Texas will host more than a million hunters over the next three months. And it's the game warden's job to make sure hunters are licensed and properly tagging their kill. Just glance in the bed up and see if there's any blood or anything. State law allows us to basically check any container or receptacle that may be used to store a game animal or any resource of the state of Texas. How you doing? State game warden, how are you? I noticed he's got a box of buckshot in the back of his truck. Notice a whiskey bottle laying there. To me, the first thing that brings up, he's, he's probably some kind of a lookout for what may be going on further on down the road. Probably one of the most prominent violations see are an undersized buck. In this area, hunters are limited to two doe and two buck per season, and the antler spread on the bucks must be at least 13 inches but some may be tempted to keep an opening weekend kill that's not legal. Y'all having all luck this morning? None at all. None? No. You want to see my hunt license? Yeah, if you got them handy. Yeah, I got them. OK. I don't know what I've done with OK. Oh, wait. Here we go. Here we go. Is this another one of y'all's guys? Or? Yeah. How many folks y'all got? I, I don't even know, really. Y'all driving, or you just still hunt? Drive. Drive. I'm yeah. driving. This particular group of guys seem to be making a deer drive. They'll stage shooters along one roadway, and then they'll go around uh, another road and, and make a big line and basically come through the woods making noise, hooping and hollering, you know, whatever it may be, trying to push these deer over on top of these guys that are staged up to shoot them. Violations are more common with hunters who do deer drives because it's harder to judge the width of a running deer's antlers. How are you guys? Good, good. Y'all got your lights on you? Take a quick look. Blood there on you. Water? No, it's water. Water? Yeah. OK. You, you hadn't killed anybody? Uh-uh, I ain't shot nothing. Yeah, okay. I mean, my ID. Yeah, you got it. Hey, if you, if you don't mind, we step out of the truck just for a sec. Man, it just looks like there's blood right here. Uh-uh. Ain't no blood on me. I ain't shot <laughs> You smell my girl. Well, I ain't saying you hadn't shot anything, but uh. Walking through the woods, I ain't shot nothing. Oh, let's walk over here. There's no trace of blood or deer hair in their trucks. Y'all gonna make another one? Y'all have a good afternoon. Inman digs a little deeper while the group resumes their deer drive. I don't know if it was blood on his pants. It sure looked like it, but the deer is key. We can say, yes, he did shoot the deer, and here is the deer. We're going to keep a little closer eye on him in that area. They're definitely going to be looking over their shoulders if they're doing anything wrong. Inman continues his patrol of the busy hunting area. Looks like he's got some blood on his gun. Hey, game warden, how are you? Good, good. good. The reason I stopped, just noticed she had some blood and stuff on you, cooler. Oh, man. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that dude. A legal kill must show proof of sex with the head intact to confirm that it's a doe or a buck. Yes, yeah, nice deer. All right, yeah, you got your license handy yes, on you. Right. Just right here on, on your harvest log. See the asterisk? Yes, sir. OK. Right here, check this box above in addition to the buck box. If the buck has a 13 or greater inch inside spread. Oh, so I need just to put another check? Yes, sir, just both of them. Okay. Yep. We, matter of fact, you can go. Yep. I've seen that. You'll be good to go. I think it was about 175 pounds. Yeah, that's a good size. Then. All right, well, we're going to get out of your way, Mr. Odell. All right, man. I'll have it's good, good to meet you. <laughs> it's uh, real busy this morning. The weather's right. We just try to make sure they're following all the required regulations and being as safe as possible. Just what you have to do to, to reach that ultimate goal of protecting the wildlife. Texas game warden Patrick True heads to a middle school that's dealing with a bird problem. Being a game warden in a metropolitan area, it's 
the birds will come nest, and it, you know they, they don't discriminate where they're going to nest. I was born in Orlando, Florida. I moved to San Antonio when I was eight. Uh, I studied criminal justice in college. The combination between being outdoors all day and uh, the fact that I had an interest in the law made the job of being a Texas game warden just a dream come true. That's what we got. So we have three birds that we found. Um, there's one on the post. There's one on the other side by the concrete. And we have one that looks to be injured here on the ground. OK. Not quite sure what kind of birds they are. Yeah, they're definitely hawks. A couple nights ago, we had a thunderstorm with a lot of wind. I think that's what caused the babies to fall out of the nest. I think they, they sustained a couple injuries. And uh, mom obviously can't get them back up to the nest. So we're going to need to help out here. Well, mom is around, right? Yeah, she's here. Normally in the wild, we wouldn't separate these birds from, from their mother. But based on the fact that they've nested in a school mm -hmm. area, that's the concern. Crew needs to work quickly to rescue the baby hawks before school lets out. It's probably unsafe for the children to be around. You know, mom comes, swoops in, tries to protect her young, and kid might get injured or something like that. Adult hawk talons can impale prey with 10 times the strength of a human hand. All right, let's give it a shot. Buddy, be OK, be OK. There you go. Let go, let go, you're OK. All right, the good thing is he's not making any noises. Because if he had made noises, he might alarm mama. The goal is to work quickly without agitating the chick's mother. All right, that went real smooth. And when I put the blanket around them, it's just like they, they get real chilled out. It's like they're going to go to sleep. So I'm going to keep a little, little bit open so the air can get in there. But mama can see us. They're younger than I thought they were. All right, so we got to get these things to a rehab center as quick as we can. Now we're headed to Last Chance Forever, who I contacted prior to coming over here to get the birds, to make sure that they could take the birds. And they told me that they have surrogates, and um, they'll be able to you know, teach them whatever they need to be taught. And then they'll you know, re release them back into the wild, which is pretty neat. He's right here. Injured. I didn't realize that at the time. Another one has a broken leg, too. Really? Gotta watch those feet, huh? I'm going to leave them here with the rehabbers. I have full confidence that the rehabbers are going to take care of them, going to mend their legs. I might go back there in a month or so just to see how they're doing. But otherwise, uh, pretty successful call out. Happy about it.